Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar from Teledyne ISCO uh, Syringe Pump Group on our high pressure pumps. Uh, first, a few housekeeping things. Uh, please use the chat feature to send messages and your questions to the meeting host at any time during the presentation. And we'll answer these questions at the end or via a follow up email if necessary. And a copy of this presentation will be posted to our website. Today's presenter is Mark Hansen, and I'm the uh, Senior Product Applications Engineer for the Syringe Pump Group. And I have about 28 years, over 28 years with the company. So, uh, today's topics, what we're going to cover, talk about today, well, first we'll kind of review the general syringe pump line. And then we're going to talk specifically about our higher pressure uh, syringe pumps and also how these can be combined into continuous flow systems, and then also talk a little bit about our newest controller, our USB and Ethernet enabled controller. Uh, the company itself has been around since 1958, and we are, our factory is located right here in Lincoln, Nebraska in the US. Uh, we do all our manufacturing here, and we have over 400 employees and about a 200,000 square foot building here. Uh, the company was purchased by Teledyne Corporation in 2004, and we are ISO certified. We've actually been making pumps. Uh, this is our third generation of syringe pumps uh, since the early uh, 70s. And uh, uh, when I'm out and about, I actually even have seen some of the original pumps still in use. So uh, they do last a very long time. Uh, there are eight standard models of the pump now, including our newest 30D pump. And these range all the way from a maximum pressure of 2,000 psi all the way up to the higher pressure pumps of, from 2,000 to 20,000 to 30,000 PSI. We also make what we call custom pumps, and these are pumps that don't normally run down the assembly line in, in, but are built to order. And we have uh, our HP, or high performance line of pumps, uh, of which the 65 HP we'll talk about a little today is a 24,000 PSI pump. And altogether, we actually make about 20 different pump models. As you may know, uh, our pumps are great at pumping all kinds of different fluids and, and liquefied gases, uh, things like CO2, of course, and organic and uh, aqueous solvents, uh, various corrosive solutions. Uh, also, fluids can be heated in our pumps. Uh, we also work well with viscous fluids of various types and even slurries and paste. Uh, one of the main features of, of a syringe type pump, of course, is very minimal flow noise. Our pumps. Uh, uh, eliminate pulsation or flow anomalies that are typically you find in other types of, of uh, non-pulse-free pumps. Also, we feature a very uh, uh, outstanding mechanical features in our pumps, including a, a, a single ratio gear drive that uh, will last uh, many, actually, decades, uh, auto-lubricating gears uh, for low maintenance. Uh, we use a lot of uh, Nitronic 50, which is an aesthetic uh, stainless, a marine grade of stainless steel, and uh, for, for very good uh, uh, strength and corrosion resistance. Also, we have several safety features built into our pumps. Uh, we have, of course, the default uh, factory and user limits set uh, and controlled by the, by the controller, monitored by it. Also, there's an independent motor current uh, monitoring circuit in, in, the control, in the pumps that will shut the uh, system down if the current should go too high. Uh, and there's also a, actually a mechanical system that uh, drive a shear key that will break to protect the system and disconnect the motor drive from the, from the, uh, from the cylinder. And then we, at, in these higher pressure pumps, we use uh, all F250C fittings, which are actually rated for up to 60,000 PSI. So then, uh, so we'll start out today and we'll talk a little bit about the various uh, syringe pumps we have, and then we're going to move on to talk about our higher pressure pumps and then the continuous flow systems and our USB controller. So the, one of the pumps in the high pressure line, the 20,000 PSI pump, we call a 65D, and uh, it has a 20,000 PSI maximum pressure, or about 1,379 bar. It can go anywhere up to 25 mils a minute. Uh, it can be operated in either constant flow or constant pressure modes. And we have a variety, either manual or air-operated valves that are available to work with it. Some of the pump options that are available for this pump, uh, we can, it can be either be ordered with Hastelloy instead of the uh, Nitronic 50, or this can be ordered as an upgrade kit and installed by the user. Uh, we also have a temperature control jacket available that will let you uh, regulate by pumping a fluid through it 
uh, to control the temperature of your fluid in your cylinder. Then uh, the next step up from that is the 65 HP. And basically this is pretty much the same as the 65D, although it's been re-engineered to a higher pressure. And so it can actually go up to 24,000 PSI. And for many years, this was our highest pressure pump that we had available. But now this year, we've introduced our latest pump, which is in this series, which is the 30D. And this pump actually can go clear to 30,000 PSI or 2,068 bar. It has a maximum flow rate of 22 mils a minute. It also can operate in constant flow or constant pressure modes. And there are manual air and electrically operated valves all available for it. Some other look specs. Uh, the ports are these F250C fittings uh, for use with quarter ID, by 085 ID, stainless steel tubing. Uh, the wetted materials in this pump are nitronic 50, uh, the graphite filled Teflon, uh, some unfilled, a little bit of unfilled peak. Uh, there's Hastelloy and it's used for the spring to hold the uh, uh, primary seal and uh, some Inconel. And overall, the height and, and dimensions of this pump are, are fairly comparable to the rest of our syringe pumps. It's slightly shorter. It does have a refill rate, a little higher refill rate available, up to 29 mils per minute. And uh, the built-in uh, uh, included pressure transducer is a 0.1% accurate full-scale uh, Honeywell Sensitec uh, transducer. And overall, the displacement resolution of this pump uh, is like about 1.82 nanoliters. Now we can take a little look inside. Uh, this pump actually, uh, although it looks almost identical to the rest, there were a lot of changes we made to, to be able to get this to reach 30,000 PSI. Uh, a new preamp circuit was designed, a new power board, uh, even a larger transformer, and uh, the pistons, push rods, and many of the other parts were also redesigned for this pump. Uh, the seal design is unique in this pump from the others. Uh, it does have a high tolerance design. Uh, that we actually have a special kit that when you go to change the seal, we recommend you use, or even uh, replacing the whole piston assembly is, is also a good uh, al alternative for this instead of just replacing the seal. But seals are available. So what kind of applications do we see for this pump? Well, with deep well reservoirs uh, getting, uh, for wells getting deeper and deeper, uh, the need to go to higher pressures for that are there uh, in, in chemistry. The, higher pressure experiments that require this precision and control and repeatability of our pump. Uh, nanobore capillary packed columns is another place where our, our pump, this pump will find use. And reactor feed and different chemical processes where uh, we need to get, you know, the user needs to get up to these types of pressures. Uh, all of three of these pumps uh, do have manual valves available from us for operation if you wish. And actually, these are the only valves that we do have available for the 65 HP. Now we'll move on to talk about continuous flow systems. Of course, if you take two of our pumps and put them together with a valve system, the controller can automatically control these to create a continuous flow stream. So you're no longer limited by the volume of the pump. So in this case, a 65D system with two 65D pumps can operate it up to 16 mils a minute continuously and uses these special air-operated quarter-inch valves. And these valves have a special feature in them that uh, their volume stays the same as they change. So this uh, minimizes any pulsation that might occur during the switchovers. Uh, the valves themselves are Hastelloy, uh, have a Hastelloy body to them. And uh, this system does come with our latest USB Ethernet controller. Then we move on to the 30,000 PSI systems. And here we're using two 30D pumps and we can get up to 14 mils a minute continuous flow. And there's a choice of either the electrically operated valves or the air operated valves. And we'll take a little closer look at both of those. So first, let's look at the electrically controlled valves. So these are powered directly from the controller. There's an actual extra circuit board that goes in there with the controller that provides the signals to operate these. Uh, the design of these valves is a stem and vol, so it's a very reliable type of, of design. Uh, these valves also have a unique uh, one-way flow path through them so that fluid can't flow in the opposite direction. And they are all Hastelloy, and the body is Hastelloy material. So here's a kind of a closer look at what they look like. Uh, this is looking at from the side, actually, where normally the pump would be connected. And you can see there is the inlet and outlet fittings in the front and back 
that feed the, the, are connected through T's to the valves themselves. This connects into the back of the controller through a 25-pin uh, socket, as you can see labeled here. And then when you actually go to use these, you go into the menu and go to uh, option number six, which is valves. And on there, you'll see with this, when this card is installed in the controller, the option to pick these electric two-way valves. Uh, by selecting this from the, venue, from the menu, then the controller knows that you're using these valves and will, will operate them in the proper sequence. The other type of valve system that are now available for the 30D are air-operated valves. So these require a pressurized air source somewhere around 80 to 115 PSI. Uh, you don't need to have a lot of volume of air, just the pressure to make the valves operate. Uh, the software in the controller has been specifically designed for these valves so that it compensates for the change in volume that these valves do, uh, hap that happens inside the valves as they switch. Uh, the valves do have a feature of having replaceable seats, so in the longer term they can be repaired. And uh, the bodies themselves are 316 stainless. Here's another shot, both a, a side view and a, a rear view of the system with these air valves so you can get a better idea of what it looks like. Uh, the inlets and outlets are shown in both of these uh, pictures so you can see where you connect your fittings, uh, both to your reservoir and to your outlet. And of course, these are all the F250C type of, of fittings and connections. Again, these connect in through the, the air actuators that are at the, on these valves, then connect to the, uh, to the controller through the the rear panel, this orange uh, terminal strip on the rear, and uh, they're connected between the plus 15 inputs and the various proper outputs for each channel. And you can have up to four uh, different pumps connected. And then also from the uh, valve menu then, uh, if you go into the valve menu, which is menu more number six, you'll see on there that number five will be the error valves. And these, uh, normally for the 20, for the 65D, you would pick number one, the active valves, but for the 30D, for these valves, you would actually pick number five, which are the active air valves, and this brings in the routines that are specifically designed for these valves in the controller. So that's a view of the continuous flow systems we have available. Now we'll talk about our, as you know, in all our pumps, we use a, a separate controller to operate the pumps, and this pump uh, controller then does not need a computer then to run the pumps. It will, you can program it directly, and it has all these different modes available for single pumps or a, a combination of multiple single pumps. You can get constant flow or constant pressure and do pressure gradients, flow gradients, or dispense. And then for multiple pumps, of course, we have these continuous flow modes of continuous constant flow or pressure, also a modifier mode and then a two-pump two concentration gradient. So this uh, newest controller pretty much looks the same uh, from the front panel as all our other controllers have uh, for the D-Series. Uh, there is a special software version of this controller for the 30D. So if you have 30D pumps, uh, they have a different uh, software in them than the, the normal, than the rest of the pumps do. And here's a look at the back panel. You can see that there are the connections for up to four pumps on the right. And on the left side, we have the, the various serial interfaces and the electric valve connection, along with the terminal strip uh, for the digital outputs and inputs. So uh, these new controllers, of course, can all operate up to four pumps. So you can have up to four separate pumps or two continuous flow systems or a continuous flow system and a couple independent pumps, if you wish, all connected to and run from a single controller. So here's a slide that just basically shows four separate pumps connected. Here we have two continuous flow systems. Uh, there is a requirement for the, if you want to run two continuous flow systems, they do need, do need to both be air valve systems. Uh, the electric valve uh, control that goes in the controller only has enough outputs, uh, doesn't have quite enough outputs to run two. So uh, best to have air valves with that if you want to run uh, two continuous flow systems. Or you can run one a continuous flow system with either air or electric valves and a couple independent pumps. We now, of course, as I mentioned, this is a USB Ethernet pump controller, so we've added two new serial modes uh, that are standard in, this, in these controllers now. So we have a total of four different uh, types of serial control. The original RS-232 serial that uses our own DASNet protocol, uh, RS-45, which uses the two-wire two Modbus uh, RTU protocol, and then the new, two new ones, the USB, that again uses our serial DASNet protocol, 
and an, and an and a, uh, Ethernet that uses Modbus TCP for uh, PLCs. And because we, we did use a non-standard connector for the USB and Ethernet, we do have special cables available uh, that will translate these into the normal USB Type A's or RJ45's for USB and Ethernet available. We also, this controller can also be ordered uh, with a, a 4 to 20 milliamp inputs instead of the standard uh, voltage inputs on the back. If you do order a controller this way, it is always 4 to 20 instead of uh, uh, a voltage input, but it does change all those signals directly instead of having an external box to do that. It also, that controller comes with this 4 to 20 milliamp output board uh, that can create, uh, you can get pressure, flow rate, and volume remaining of the pump out for up to four pumps. It does initially come with just three of the output boards, and you can add additional output boards if you need more output signals. This is also available as a zero to 10 volt output uh, optionally too. So you can either get four to 20 milliamp outputs uh, if you wish out of your controller uh, to monitor the signals for zero to 10 volt signals. So to kind of summarize the controller, as far as what comes standard with it, you get the voltage control inputs, the four different types of serial, and the digital run stop. Optionally, then, we have drivers for LabVIEW software. Uh, so you can hook a computer uh, through one of those four serial uh, interfaces and use LabVIEW. Uh, some universal driver software, if you wish to write your own software, kind of helps with that. Uh, if you want to work in the Microsoft languages, it provides uh, a data a link library and a, some function calls that make it easier to talk to the pump uh, from your own software. Uh, the 0 to 10 volt output board, as we saw here a minute ago, or the 4 to 20 milliamp output. Uh, also, uh, you can get 4 to 20 milliamp inputs, as I mentioned, uh, built into the controller or as a separate uh, isolated uh, box that we, you connect to the back of the controller. So in summary today, we've looked at three different high-pressure versions of ISCO pumps, the 20,000 PSI 65D, the 24,000 PSI 65HP, and the 30,000 PSI, our newest pump, the 30D. And for continuous flow systems with these, of course, we have the air valves available for the 65D system, and either then the electric or the air-operated valves for the 30D. So, in summary then, or in conclusion, that we have both the 20 and 30,000 continuous flow systems available for our high pressure syringe pumps. Uh, you can always keep up to date with our products from our website. The best way to get to the syringe pump part of that is to go to www.isco.com slash SP, short for syringe pump. And there you'll find many um, uh, applications notes and technical bulletins that we uh, update quite regularly that give, provide you a lot of additional information about our pumps. And of course, many of our pumps that do end up being customized, uh, particular applications, and we're always happy uh, to discuss that with you. Uh, you can get in contact either your salesperson or directly myself or Dale Clay uh, with your special requirements, and we'd be happy to discuss those. As I mentioned, uh, you can always find our apps notes for our pumps online. And if you need further contact, uh, Either your salesperson or Dale Clay or myself are always available to, uh, to work with you and answer and, and try to help in any way we can. So at this point, I'd like to thank you for attending, and you could submit your questions at this time and we'll, uh, using the chat feature, and we'll be happy to answer anything you might have.